And uh, on the line with us uh, we, 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 is uh, Greg Pallas, the investigative journalist, author, filmmaker, the best democracy money can buy, gregpallas.com, his website. You can tweet him at Greg underscore Pallas. We just had a, uh, a fascinating and long conversation with Congressman Ro Khanna, the vice chair of the Progressive Caucus, uh, Greg, about, the, uh, about how the Republicans are basically lying about uh, you know, Judge Kavanaugh and how Judge Kavanaugh has been lying. And then also about all the, we had several callers who were talking about how, how enraged they were that, that their vote had been suppressed or they'd been knocked off the voting roll in Midwestern states uh, in the 2016 election. Um, and in the, you know, the backdrop of all this, of course, is, is uh, well, there's a whole bunch of pieces to it, but you're specifically reporting on Chris Kobach in Kansas. So you want to bring us up to date on this? Oh, yeah. Today, in fact, probably as we speak, there's going to be a hearing uh, when uh, an active citizen named Davis Hammett, and this guy, I'm going to hire him, man. What a great investigative reporter. Mm -hmm. uh, he went, he's demanding a recount of the primary vote where Chris Kobach supposedly won the gubernatorial primary in Kansas by 350 votes. Well, uh, Kobach's minions in various counties decided that he was going to do what he usually does to Democrats, not count the, his Republican opponent, the sitting governor, Collier. In uh, Collier's main area, which is Johnson County, which is a suburb of Kansas City, Kansas, um, that uh, there were 2,300 people forced to provisional ballots and um, you know, about half were not counted that, in that one county. So he did a purge in the county of the uh, the home county of his opponent. He did a voter purge. He did purges. He did. Uh, that's why a lot of people are showing up, not getting ballots. He also did something else, which I hate to say was something that the California establishment did against uh, Bernie Sanders in 2016 in Kansas. If you're not affiliated with a party, you can vote in the Republican primary. Those people were either sent away or told that they had to fill out provisional ballots, which were then rejected. It ain't true. The law requires, uh, says you can, uh, uh, you know, register on the day as a Republican and, and vote. Right. Um, and those independents were the ones who really couldn't stomach Kobach. He knew that. 2,300 votes in just that one county, another 2,300, probably about 10,000 provisional ballots across Kansas. And the other trick that they used, that Kobach used, is uh, saying, oh, there were no signature matches on the absentee ballots sent in, ma the mail-in ballots in the primary. Mm -hmm. This is another trick. Um, unfortunately, that was used in, uh, by on um, hundreds of thousands of voters in the 2016 Sanders-Clinton primary in California. So Kobach learns from some of the Democrats, too. I hate to say it, but they said signatures didn't match. Um, uh, just over 100 in just that uh, one single county in Kansas that's a, a Collier stronghold. They didn't reject a single um, ballot for mismatched signature in the Kobach stronghold in Wichita, whereas uh, the Kansas City um, uh, Collier area, they rejected them uh, over 100 in just that one county. Now, understand what that means. There's, by the way, there's no law in Kansas that says you may reject a ballot uh, hmm. because of a signature. You know, if an American says, I am, this is me, this is my ballot, I'm an American citizen, I'm voting, that's it, baby, in, uh, in Kansas under the law. But Kobach decided he's his own law and told his county directors. Because he's the in, secretary of state. Yeah, he he's the this. secretary of state to, um, um, to uh, knock out mismatched signatures, but only, it was only happening in those Collier counties. So Chris Kobach, uh, did to the to his Republican opponent what uh, the his Republican opponent applauded when he did it against Democrats. So no tears for Collier, but tears for democracy in Kansas. Remarkable. I, I have a question, a follow up on that. But lest we forget, this is not new. In 1980, Paul Weyrich, the co-founder of the Heritage Foundation, working on the Reagan campaign, speaking to a group of Democrats in a church basement in Texas, excuse me, a, a group of activist Republicans, Republican, yes. Christian activist, fundamentalist, uh, Christian activist Republicans, said this. Now, many of our Christians have what I call the goo-goo syndrome, good government. They want everybody to vote. I don't want everybody to vote. Elections are not won by a majority of people. They never have been from the beginning of our country, and they are not now. As a matter of fact, our leverage in the elections quite candidly goes up 
as the voting populace goes down. Now, this has been the Republican mantra literally since 1980. They have been engaging in voter suppression. There's been virtually no discussion about it on the Democratic side, which I think is horrible. Now, uh, now uh, Greg Pallast, I understand that the governor, Governor Collier of Kansas, the one who got bumped off by Chris Kobach, has uh, come out and said this is wrong. <laughs> well, Collier complained to Kobach during the count. And by the way, Chris Kobach was counting his own ballots, okay? He's right. OK, and finally, uh, he said, by the way, you violated your uh, your uh, oath as an attorney. You violated the law as secretary of state. Stop counting your own ballots or not refusing. The main thing was refusing to count Collier's ballots. So he just turned. So Kobach just turned it over to a flunky. And by the way, he's in a tight, tight race, Kobach. But he's not recusing himself from counting the votes in the November um, uh, general election against the Democrat and independent. So, you know, this is an old game. Collier, I have no sympathy for the Republican sitting governor that Kobach beat because Collier was right there uh, applauding Kobach for saying uh, voters ought to be required to sh prove that they're citizens, you know, making yeah. every voter, uh, young voter, a suspect. Right. Um, so, you know, this is, a, but it's not just Kansas, it's all over America. That's why I'm suing Kobach and, uh, you know, 25 of his, of his GOP brethren. Speaking of which, how's that lawsuit going? Well, today, Mr. Kobach, if you're listening in, and I know he usually does, by the way, uh, Mr. Kobach, you've got till 5 p.m. your time to cough up your papers, the names of the people you've purged off the voter rolls, and I'll share them with Mr. Collier, too. Um, and I want those names by 5 p.m. or you'll see me in federal court. I should say, and here's some very good news, my attorney contacted me and said they're dropping like flies. Even Brian Kemp who is running against Stacey Abrams for governor. He's the secretary of state. He's removed 591,000 voters from the Kansas, excuse me, from the uh, Georgia voter rolls. He's secretary of state there. And he's bleached the voter rolls whiter than white for his run against uh, Stacey Abrams, the African-American woman running against him. And I've demanded his purge list. And um, hours before uh, he was gonna have to face me in federal court, he said, I'll cough up the entire list. So wow. we'll see if he's going to play games with that, but that's a big win. Colorado has said, you've got the list. Uh, they're coming They're coming in from all over the country as they're actually realizing that federal judges really um, are not going to be too kind to Jim Crow. Do you think that is going to be changing as uh, more and more right-wing federal judges are being appointed by, by Trump? I mean, they, 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 they had, for the last two years of the Obama presidency, they basically didn't allow any federal judges to go on the bench to the point that John Roberts said, you know, wrote, an, wrote a letter to Paul Ryan saying this is a crisis for the federal judiciary. Uh, you know, uh, Ryan, or excuse me, to Mitch McConnell. Mitch McConnell didn't care. Uh, you know, he, he also suppressed, uh, you know, held back a, a vote on uh, Merrick Garland. Um, so, so what's up with that? Is that going to be changing the nature of these kinds of decisions, do you think? Are you I'm seeing any my, evidence of that? Oh, yeah. I'm sick to my stomach about it. In fact, there's no question. I'm going to be very blunt. We're going to try to keep this out of the Supreme Court, my case, against Kobach and these other guys. We're going to keep it to the details of state of uh, what's happening in each state, because if uh, Kavanaugh gets on the court, uh, we're, we're dead in the water. I, I'm very afraid of Kavanaugh and, and this current court. You know, Kennedy was not great, but, you know, he had some doubts about just unleashing Jim Crow on the voter rolls. You have a, an attorney general who's supposed to protect the voters who actually said that we don't, the Voting Rights Act was gutted. He says we don't need any of it at all. That's Jeff Beauregard Sessions. Mm. Um, I'm very, very afraid of the change in the federal bench. That's why I'm moving very quickly. And, and I'm not afraid of, of Republican judges. I mean, Republican judges have banged Chris Kobach over the head. I can't tell you how many times telling him, by the way, sir, we have a democracy. But, you know, he's been resisting. I'm just afraid of these new ultra right guys that they are stuffing the benches with. Very, very dangerous. Yeah, they're not Republicans. They're, they're toadies for the billionaire class who are being propped up by the Federalist Society, which is funded by the billionaire class. Uh, in large part. It's it's pretty amazing. Greg Palast, you can check out his website, gregpalast.com, his latest movie, The Best Democracy Money Can Buy. You can watch it over on Amazon and other places. Uh, Greg, thanks so much for being with us today. You're the best, Tom. Thank you. Great talking with you.